not sure how this works, but anyway. Hello, um, uh, my name is Rosie, and I firstly just want to say a huge thank you to you all, because uh, I am no expert, you really are, and I've learned more today than I could ever hope to in months of sitting in the Middle East and Skyping you all and hoping that you'll be there and, and trying to, to learn how to better talk about this subject. So we've been spending the last, uh, my group, which is Media Dante and also uh, uh, another production company in the UK called Anagram, have been spending the last two years uh, looking at this subject, desperate to try and find a way in that we think would engage the public properly. Because so far, I think the public is, although aware of the subject, pff, a little bit meh about it all. And that's what we hope to change. So I've been listening a lot to today, and what's been quite encouraging for us is that I, I think that all of the things that you guys are asking for, I think we are going to answer in our project. And I'd like to present to you an idea that I'm hoping some of you might want to be involved in. So a lot of you have talked today about education and the need for education at every level from four and five year olds understanding not to put a, push a vase onto the floor um, to local and regional and global education about uh, the, the value of cultural heritage. Um, and we hope that our project will engage at all levels and, and via, via many different platforms that we all use every day in the social media world. Uh, you've also talked about the need for greater legislation. Um, we hope that our project will be some sort of spark towards the creation of a taboo around uh, this subject, uh, about this crime, um, something similar to the way seat belts are now. Uh, to not wear a seat belt or to put your child in a car seat is considered absolutely horrific, whereas in the 80s it was kind of fine. Um, in fact, where I live, it's still kind of fine to not have your child in a car seat, and I have to stay very quiet most of the time. Um, but we hope that our project will lead to creating something of a taboo around this subject. Um, I also think that generally we're losing the media battle when all of us sitting here, we've not watched a single ISIS video today, but all of us can recall probably five, six, seven of them in our minds and images that they've dramatically put up on the, on the internet have been spread widely. Uh, whereas we're battling with, uh, with documentaries in long form, a few newspaper articles, which admittedly are excellent and brilliantly researched. But, but I can tell you today, I've, I've been tweeting, like man, manically tweeting, and I've got quite a avid following on, on Twitter. And in fact, the first uh, tweet I had in reply was from a member of ISIS who said, actually, we, you know, we are not going to be defeated. And I've only had about two or three retweets, which is totally not normal for me. So it shows to me that all of my very, uh, my very, engaged, uh, uh, the, the very engaged Twitter following that I have, all in the media, are not that interested, even though I, what I think I've been listening to is fascinating. Um, and yeah, like I said, the ISIS videos we can all think of, even though we're not watching them right now. Um, what we hope to do is, through this engagement, also we hope lead to something of the whistleblowing um, that some of you have also called for. So we're going to be trying to hit all of those notes in our project. So our, our overall aim is to engage a worldwide, multi-platform audience in your fight against this crime. And we hope that we can be a conduit for your story and all the things that you guys want to achieve. Um, we're going to do that by, um, by hopefully finding a way to re relate the objects that you're all talking about or the, um, the visuals that you're all talking about of, of giant um, uh, things like Jenne in, in, um, in Mali and to um, relate that to people's own history and own stories. Uh, the, the history of objects was the first way of understanding what has, is the only way to understand what happened perhaps 6,000 years ago. Um, and we hope that people in today's world where an internet of things is a buzzword um, can relate to that in a very modern way through our project. Uh, we're going to enable them, like I say here, to literally reach out and touch and feel the subject in all its dimensions. And we're also going to give people a chance to tell their, their own stories. How are we going to do that? We're going to, first of all, create an online interactive website. We've got support from a number of people. The New York Times seems to be the front runner there. Um, and we're going to ask, we're, we're going to go on a hunt and find five objects that have been stolen, that have also been recovered, and try and trace their modern day story. How did they get there? What's the likely route that they took? We'll, we'll pick obvious places like eBay or 
a Brussels antique shop or a, uh, a, 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 a somewhere in Beirut, places where off these things are often turning up so that we can tell a more general story, not a, not a very specific story about these these five objects. Then we'll also try and attempt, although it's very difficult, as you know, to tell the um, historical story of these objects, whether it be in film or in art. So it's got a current affairs and an art dimension to it so far. Um, we, we've been very lucky in the, in the course of our um, inquiries. Somebody mentioned to us along the way in one of the locations that we work in the Middle East that they'd found a box full of, uh, of treasures, frankly, and we went along to go and see them. And we were um, bowled over by the feeling it gave us to be s something that you guys are all so used to, I'm afraid. But for me, it's not, I've never experienced this before. But to be so close to this bird that was so, um, is so ancient and to feel um, it, the fragility of this object that's wrapped in loo paper um, and kind of kept in a box on a shelf. Um, some of these, I'm sure some of you are noticing immediately, are fakes um, and others are real. Um, but for us, the, the proximity of these amazing things and, and the fragility of them, like I say, made us feel like there was a, a better way to engage the, the public in this subject than, than just merely documenting um, what's, what's been going on. So then we go to the next level of our, um, our project. So we're also going to 3D model those five objects that we've told the ancient and modern stories of and make those 3D models available online so that people can download them themselves and, and host their own pop-up exhibitions around the world or simply print one off for their mum for Christmas. I don't know whether you know now, but, but the, you can actually print um, uh, porcelain um, with a glaze on it as well that's very specific. Um, I, I don't know quite how it works because I'm not doing that part of the project, but it looks much more real than you imagine. And you can also print it very crudely, which has its own artistic merits in some people's views. And then the third level of our story is on this website, we're going to encourage people to upload their own stories and their own objects. Now, it might be something which has a relationship with the Syrian and Iraqi story that we're going to start our project with. Um, uh, it, or it might be something that has no particular relationship to that. So it may be, for instance, that it's a doll um, that made its way to um, Kansas with a, with a girl, and that becomes another object in a pop-up exhibition. Or maybe somebody's sitting at home and they choose to 3D scan that object with the three or four apps that are available on your phone for free to 3D scan an object, or just take a photo of it, tell its story and upload it onto the site, and that becomes your plunder. It could, be, um, it, it could be something completely unrelated, like a, 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 you know, this strange little animal, I'm not quite sure how to describe it, a goat, I guess, um, which your, your aunt gave you who had uh, some importance in your life. Um, it could be a shopping, if you were holding an exhibition in a, in a, in a big hall of these five objects, your sixth object could be, um, for instance, a shopping trolley full of precious things that belong to a tramp anything that's precious and has a story to tell. That's what we're looking for. Um, this, by the way, this project, I'm just going give to give him a, a bit of a plug, is by a guy called Zia Gafik, the, these objects, and he uploads every day um, a new object. He took 1,001 um, pictures of objects from the Sarajevo mass graves, and he uploads a different one each day. Some he has stories for and some he doesn't, but I always found that a very engaging thing to look at. Um, and we hope in this way that this online website will grow and grow and grow. Um, and it may be filled with uh, stolen Syrian and Iraqi objects, or it may just be filled with um, odd little things that people think are important and the world might want to know about. But they'll all be available online for people to take an interest in. Um, so, and then we're here mainly to learn, but we also need your help and brain power. We're looking for those five objects. If you have one that you think um, is interesting, that, that's been discovered, something that your institute knows about, something that you've heard about, please can you come up to me after this and help um, find us, uh, find, find me, or um, I've got a producer sitting in the audience here um, who, will, uh, who, who can talk to you about that object. Um, we're also, it's a work in development. So for instance, I already spoke to somebody earlier about possibly adding a whistleblowing element. You know, if this will encourage people to whistleblow, then can we add a whistleblowing element to this on the website? Um, we're really open to suggestions at this point. And the last thing, it's a little bit awkward because I know it's not easy, but we're looking for funding. 
Um, we're right at the beginning. We've got a certain amount of money, but we need to make this happen. We believe it's important, and we believe it will work. Thank you very much.